All right, folks, I finally finished turn one. I found the time to do it. Uh, and here's what the battlefield currently looks like. You probably can't see too much of the details unless maybe I zoom in. Uh, there is some disordered units all across the board, and basically units are flipped to the reverse side to show that. Uh, looking over here on the right, uh, and again, Williams was the one to activate last, which was good for him. It allowed him to attempt some rallies uh, with his last division activation, which he did here and failed, even though he's with the unit itself. It's a bonus for that for every star. And he failed. Over here, Crawford put himself out of command to get all the way over here uh, to the 46th PA and did manage to rally this unit. It is no longer disordered. And it's a pretty big, sizable unit, so pretty important for his brigade. Uh, unfortunately, he took himself out of command range uh, from his division commander, Williams, who only has a range of five. So shooting down this road here, I think he's about six hexes away. He just can't make it. Uh, so he'll be starting the next turn uh, out of command, which is what happened over here, if you remember, uh, with this Brigadier, Prince. But fortunately, Prince is now in command of his division commander, which is right here, I believe, Augur. He's right next to him. Uh, he has five range, so basically five movement points to get to his Brigadier, which is right next to him. Uh, so that's the situation. I think it's pretty interesting over here on the left flank. So let's kind of look at this a little bit. And you can basically see where the Ewell's division, this is Ewell's division, these three brigades here for the rebels. Uh, one thing that happened here at the end of the turn, you go through a, basically an upkeep step and one of the things you go through is determine the combat effectiveness of your divisions and brigades and Trimble's brigade which is only three regiments strong they're all disordered every one of them and that makes his brigade combat ineffective so he gets this little marker placed on his brigade to show that and he's going to be penalized and the basic penal penalty for him is going to be that he can only take a maximum of two activations uh, every turn, regardless of how many times this division activates, he's maxed at two. So that's unfortunate. Another thing that's going to come into play is one of his regiments is pretty much isolated, uh, well away from the brigade commander. So he's pretty much out of command, that unit. That's a rough place to be for his brigade, honestly. Uh, three regiments strong there. Pretty chunky regiments. Let's see, he took three hits, ouch, and he took one. So this eight strength point regiment is down, it took three hits, so that's five, I believe. So he's actually at five strength points, which is unfortunate. So, yeah, he pushed his brigade pretty hard, and he's going to be paying a price for that in the next turn. I can see that. Across from him, of course, we have Prince's, uh, Prince's brigade. He's got a stack of two disordered units here, which have been pretty beat up. And they're not strong to begin with. Of course, here is Prince. Uh, so that's going to be an issue for him. Uh, however, he does have three regiments remaining, which are in pretty solid position. Especially these two. I mean, during this turn, the final activation, I think, was Yule, for the Rebels anyway. And he moved his one brigade here, Forno's brigade, up. At least these two, these three regiments moved up. And I was going to do some shock combat and get into melee and maybe force these two Union units back. I'm really trying to put a lot of pressure on this brigade, Prince's brigade. But I didn't do that. I think I got a little lazy. So I just moved them up. We took some fire and return fire. And the return fire of the Union was quite effective. This center unit, in fact, did take a strength point hit, and it is disordered. Uh, the other two flanking regiments are in good shape. But next turn, I'll probably do some shock combat over there and see what happens. He did kind of move up this regiment as well uh, to kind of keep them all together like this. Uh, he can keep the whole brigade in command, 
a Forno if he's within distance of one of these guys because these are adjacent. they got a nice little chain going there. Uh, so yeah, there is that. And he's under attack orders. And so is Trimble. Uh, let's go over here a little bit. Take a look over here. And of course, Gordon's Brigade is under attack as well. I didn't really take advantage of that. Uh, I did finish off this one rebel unit, which was really down to two strength points. Uh, I didn't engage in shock combat. I could have, but I just shot him and blew him away, basically. Took some return fire, but uh, it was relatively ineffective. So this unit that was holding me back is now gone. Uh, I'm already in attack orders, which will be good. We'll see what I do with that in the next turn. Get a little aggressive uh, with Gordon, even though that was not my original intention. Uh, but over here, Crawford's Brigade, like I said before, it is pretty beat up. Stack of two disordered units. They've taken some strength point losses as well. And that's pretty much because of Pender's Brigade, which is quite sizable and strong, under attack orders, is moving up on my flank and causing a lot of, a lot of problems. Uh, yeah, so that's going to be an issue. They're still under advance orders, Crawford. And remember, these guys, this brigade is going to be out of command in the next turn. So we'll see what role that plays. Otherwise, yeah, that's the situation. Archer's Brigade is still in reserve. That's part of Hill's division. These three brigades here, part of Hill's division. Uh, and so far, all of his brigades and uh, his divisions are in command. Uh, Banks as well, his two divisions are both in command. The only issues I'm going to have is down here with Crawford being out of command in the next turn. Uh, it's too far away from Williams. So that's the situation. As far as the game is concerned, uh, and by this way, by the way, this unit here that was holding back the Union, it was eliminated. It wasn't routed. It was eliminated. Its strength points was taken to zero, so he was just picked up and removed. So that's the situation so far in the battle. My practice game. It's great fun. I'm having a blast. Next thing to do now is go into turn two. And we'll go through initiative once again, and we'll draw some efficiency counters for the brig uh, core commanders here. And again, there's no OCs, there's no overall commanders here, so that won't be influenced by that. But these values will be modified by the divisional commander's modifier, uh, and some other things. Really enjoyable game. I'm really liking it. There's a lot of options I haven't used yet. Like, for one, I haven't really done shock combat too much. I did it over here on the left. Uh, I think I might have did one over here, but I haven't really done it heavily yet. I'm doing a lot with the musketry shooting, rifle shooting and stuff, and that's interesting how it works. There's other options, like you can have your units go into extended line, uh, where they basically occupy the hex adjacent to them. And there's little counters for that. So I haven't done that yet. I might try that. I believe when the unit fires, it'll be able to fire from both hexes instead of all from one. And I believe that'll take advantage of large units that have a high strength point. I'm not sure how that works. That's, that's the whole point of this practice game. So we'll see how that works. I'll throw a couple units in extended order and see how that happens. Another option is... Uh, refusing a flank. Regiments can refuse their flanks. And there's little counters for that, which I got them here. I don't have them handy. They're in one of these little bags. But it basically, they literally can refuse their right or left flank under certain circumstances, like when they're on the uh, end of a line. Like this unit here, he's on the end of this little line. He can refuse his right flank. So that's how it works. Uh, which will be interesting. So I'll probably try that as well in the next turn. And I do have a collapsed unit here for the Union. I can't really do anything about it since I'm not going into any dusk turns or anything, so he can't recoup from that. Uh, he can't be rallied from disorder, so he's pretty much stuck. He's just hanging out, chilling, watching the, watching the battle unfold. Uh, very interesting. I still have some rules, mechanics to investigate, check out, like I said, more of the close combat or the shock combat as well as the extended line and refusing flanks and so on and so forth still working on that uh, having brigades go into uh, co combat ineffectiveness that's gonna I'll see what role that plays but uh, all in all I'm really enjoying this game 
Uh, a lot happens in a single turn, especially when you've got three uh, AM markers per turn. Uh, I mentioned this before in the paint and chat yesterday, uh, just to clarify something about this, because it does seem like it might be a little random since you're putting a certain number of AM markers in the pot and you're drawing them at random. Uh, you know, you don't know who's going to be acting when you pull out that AM. That tells you which division is activated. So you don't really know. The only thing you really know is how many AM markers you have for each of your divisions. So you know who's more likely to pop up first or able to react more often during the turn if they have more AM markers. You do know that. But there are is some rules that can change that and gives you some control so it's less random. For instance, initiative itself, you know, it's basically a D10 uh, with the Army Commander's modifier, the OC's modifier, and the high roll uh, basically gets to pick one of those AM markers before they're put in the pot. Once they're all figured out how many you're going to put in there, uh, the guy with initiative picks one of them, and that division activates first before anything, before any are drawn randomly. That division activates, and takes care of business right off the get-go. So that's one way you uh, get around the randomness factor, and it's quite potent. If nobody has initiative, you just draw from the pot as normal. Another way is there is this uh, rule. I have to read up on this, but it's you can actually, before they're put in the pot, you can decide to take away AM markers from one division you don't want to do much with and give them to another division, uh, allowing that division to take more uh, actions. He basically has more activation markers. And that's a way you can control it too. So that's interesting. Uh, so that's a couple ways you can influence it. And there's also, uh, not really, it doesn't really affect the AM poll. But you can do coordinated brigade activations. That's where you try and activate uh, more than one brigade in a single division. So for instance, let's say William's division his marker came up. Okay, his division is activated. Well, instead of activating each brigade one at a time, which is how it works, I can attempt a brigade coordination, and it can result in you know it can result in some bad things as well, uh, where I'm not doing anything with my my brigades. But it could result in all the brigades or some of the brigades able to activate at once, kind of like as if they were all from the same single brigade in a way. And that has a lot of strong points in it as well. And I'll probably try that in the game. In fact, I think I did try it at one point in the battle here, but I'm not sure where that happened. But yeah, you can do that as well. So that's a, another powerful tool in your command set for the battle. All right, folks, that's my observations so far. Really enjoying it. Gonna go on the turn two, and I'll keep posting videos if you guys enjoy it and show you my progress. And hopefully, when I'm ready, uh, we'll jump into Cedar Mountain proper and play a full battle. And I'll do a full bat rep on that. Any questions, comments, let me know, folks. Great battles of the American Civil War. The Twin Peaks box set. Really a joy. And, uh, uh, yeah, that's my update so far, folks. I will talk to you soon. Take care.